So hello everyone and welcome to my talk. So when I first uh, got the question if I wanted to have a talk today, I thought that I don't really have time for it right now. And that was of course because a new World of Warcraft expansion had just <laughs> released. <laughs> <laughs> so, after some consideration, I thought that, what if I combined the two? What if I created an add-on for World of Warcraft and then presented that on the conference? So that's what I did. A little bit about me. Uh, my name is Ruth Merete Granewang. I have a Master of Computer Science. I've been a developer since 2005, and I won the Female Developer of the Year in 2022. Uh, <laughs> I currently work at ASCAU as a developer, and I have a special passion for programming and creating educational games. And this is my homepage. So what is an add-on? In World of Warcraft, an a lot of other games, you can add some extra utility to the game. And in this game, you cannot modify the existing logic and rules, but you can add something new. You can run scripts, you can add UI elements. And some examples of popular add-ons are, for instance, tracking damage. Uh, everyone likes tracking your damage and competing with your friends to see who is contributing the most. Uh, you can update your health bars to only display the most important things. And you can have warnings, for instance. So what add-ons should I make? I wanted to make something that added some value to the game. And it was important that it did not already exist, because then I could just, just download it and use that instead. <laughs> and uh, since this was about a month ago, it couldn't be too complicated because I needed to be sure that I actually finished it and had time to make the talk. <laughs> and I wanted to create something that I will use when I play the game. So what I ended up with was an add-on that will summon the right mount for each of my characters. So uh, this is an existing UI in World of Warcraft. It is called uh, um, the mount journal and as you can see uh, a lot of this is a game that's been around for quite a while it's actually 20 years old this year so people have gathered up a lot of mounts uh, over the years and uh, but I wanted to like utilize my mounts and not uh, yeah uh, not scroll inside this list to find the perfect mount they have also added a summon random favorite mount but that wasn't quite enough for me because when I play my warlock, I want her to be like dark and have blue horses or maybe purple or black. But when I play my druid, I want white horses and greens and nice things. So that's why I created this and it's called the mount selector. Uh, you can press a button to summon a random mount. And if you are in a flyable area, it will summon a flyable mount. And for each of those characters, uh, you can choose uh, the preferred type. For instance, my frost uh, mage, she likes to ride on dragons or cats. But my warlock ri likes unicorns and horses. And the preferred color. And I also added some bonus functionality. That is this uh, list of um, Mounts based on type and color. <laughs> and that little checkbox. Um, so you can choose if you only want to use of your favorite mounts. The first thing I had to do was to learn how to code Lua. And that is the scripting language that is used in World of Warcraft add-ons. And it's a lightweight, efficient scripting language. It's embeddable, so it's easy to embed into other languages. It's dynamically typed. It has automatic memory management. It's free and open source. And it is used in several games for scripting game mechanics and creating add-ons. 
And some examples are Baldur's Gate, Roblox, The Sims, Path of Exile, Exile and World of Warcraft. So here is some basic Lua syntax. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty intuitive and straightforward. There's a comment, there is, you can print out to the console, you can define local and global variable. And uh, this is how a function is defined and how it's called. And this here is a normal condition. Uh, and there is one data structure in Lua that is uh, used a lot, and it's called Lua tables. And it can hold any type of data, including functions. And the key can be anything but nil values. And here's an example with um, a number, string, boolean, and a function in the table. And you can extract the data by either using the brackets notation or the dot notation. And tables, they are references. So when the reference to a table is lost, uh, the data is uh, garbage collected. And you can loop through tables using uh, uh, pairs. And you can also use tables as arrays. And if you do so, you probably want to use i pairs, since that uh, guarantees the order of the elements, unlike pairs, when you loop through it. And then you need to add find a name for your add-on. And it is very important that it is unique, so it don't clash with other add-ons. So then you need to do some research, because there are a lot of different uh, add-on tools out there. And uh, so mine became Ruth's Mount Selector, because Mount Selector was a little bit generic, but Ruth's is my uh, in-game name. And then you create a new folder that should be in your add-ons folder. And it should represent the name of your add-on. And that must also be unique. And after that, you can create a .talk file that will define your add-on. Uh, it should be in the root folder of your new folder. And it should be named uh, exactly the same as the folder, just with a dot .talk ending. And the fi this file, it defines some metadata for your add-on, for instance, a version, title, author. And it also defines what variables you need to save across your sessions. For instance, what types or colors you have picked. And what files to include. And now I'm going to show you some examples from my add-on. So th this is how I create the main frame. That's the frame around my add-on. And I do that by using the function create frame. The first parameter is what type of frame. It could be frame, button, menu, and some other stuff. Uh, the second is the name of the frame. And the third parameter is what is, is it logically attached to? And the last one is if you want to apply a template to it. And I use the basic frame template with insets uh, to make this uh, nice uh, cross in the corner and stuff. Then I set the size and uh, uh, align it right on the page. And I hide it to make sure that it doesn't pop up every time I start the game. And then there's uh, several lines just for setting the title with a font. And uh, I also like having my, um, my windows draggable, so I can decide where it is on my screen. So therefore, I on the title background, I added a script. So if you mouse down, you can move uh, the frame. And if you release it, then it stops moving. And some data, I needed a lot of data for this add-on. I uh, extracted the list of mounts from the game. And uh, it was easy to get the name of the mount, the icon, whether it's flying or not. But what I couldn't find any data for, and what was probably the reason why this add-on did not exist already, was I couldn't find uh, uh, what color the mount was. 
and I could not find what type it was. So I did a combination of two different approaches. I fed all my the data I had into ChatGPT and let it guess what color and name, uh, what color uh, and type uh, it had. For instance, uh, if the icon name was like blue dragon hawk, then it could guess that blue was the color and maybe it was some kind of bird. But in the end, I had to do a lot of manual checks and yeah, to create data. And this is the data format I ended up with, with the name, ID, spell ID, icon type and color. And here is how I created the filter dropdown. So you can press the select colors dropdown and then choose one or more colors. I used the create frame again. And here I used the UI dropdown menu template and setting a width on it. And then <coughs> sorry, uh, aligning it uh, uh, on the screen. And then I used um, the UI dropdown menu initialize. Uh, that makes me, um, I can send in a function that will initialize uh, the dropdown. And so this is the function I sent in. Thank you. I thought I'd just take uh, <coughs> The self here is uh, the actual dropdown. Then I create a local table called info, and I'm using the UI dropdown menu create info function to create a basic template for it. Then I'm adding a function, and this function is what is run when you click uh, the button in the UI. And then it selects the color, saves it, and re-render the list of available mounts. Then first, uh, I added the all, uh, all button. I, it's called buttons, all, this, um, all the items in the list. And I set the text, the value, and if it's checked or not. And then I use the UI dropdown menu, add button to add it to the list. And so I uh, loop through all the colors and I reuse the info table, but I'm changing the text value unchecked for each of them. So, um, but the function is still the same. And then I add, add the buttons. And here is how I get the available mounts data. First, I'm creating a local um, variable to store them. And then uh, the C mount journal is an API that um, has a lot of methods regarding mounts. And this basically loops through every mount in the game. And then I use some functions to pick out uh, all the data I need. I had to use two different. The get mount info by ID and get mount info extra by ID. <laughs> and then I check, uh, is this mount usable by this character and have the user collected it? And should I consider whether it's a favorite or not? And if that is true, then I fetch the hardcoded data, of my data that I built by the find, find mount by ID function I have made. And then I basically merges the data from the game with my hardcoded data. And here is how I create the summon button. And that's this button that will actually do the summoning of the mount. Uh, I do use the create frame again, and this time a button with a button template. Uh, I set the size and align it, set the text. And then I add an on-click script to it. So if uh, you are mounted, then dismount. Otherwise, it reloads all the mounts and then summons the correct mount. And um, then I clear uh, the key bindings to be able to set a new key binding. So I, um, the user can select a key. Here, the value is Q. So when I press Q, 
it will um, trigger the random mount button. So I can use cube whether or not this frame is uh, visible. And then it was time to publish the add-ons so people can download it. Right now I have 117 downloads or something. So, um, and I pi picked CurseForge because that is the add-on manager that I use. Uh, and there uh, I had to create a project, add an icon and a description, upload some screenshots and zip the folder containing the add-on. And it was important to get the folder also and not just the contents of it. And there was an approval process. The first time it took a couple of days, but after that, every update, it took just a few minutes because then they run some kind of automatic check that just checked that the file formats and stuff were okay. And here's some uh, resources that you can look into if you want. And if you have some trouble, I would recommend going to the Discord server that is here. Um, they help me out a lot. So, yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks.